Well, hello and welcome to this week's update. Thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube. So the markets have had a significant move higher. Inflation pulled back from 9.1% down to 8.5%. Uh, that is still a very heavily manipulated figure. It is the CP lie, not the CPI. And uh, while that is good news and uh, things are cooling off a little bit, I think that'll probably be short-lived but we may have seen a peak in inflation who knows but people are still finding things extremely difficult the cost of living is still uh, really hurting the people that can afford it the least which is always the way that it works but we did see employment numbers that were very strong as well I think that will be something going forward where we'll start to see more weakness a lot of people are laying uh, staff off right now we're seeing that in major tech companies throughout the world and lots of different companies around the world. So I think the next employment numbers will not be as incredibly strong as what they were here. But when you're getting inflation official numbers that have gone from 9.1 down to 8.5, you're getting incredible uh, jobs reports that showing that the employment numbers are back up to where they were pre-COVID. Those sort of things cause the markets to move up. But right now we do have this upward uh, this downward sloping channel line that we're likely to run into on the SPX and uh, if you have a look here on the SPX they've got an RSI of almost 72 on the daily chart right so that's very overbought so we're overbought in the short term we could be running into that downward uh, downward sloping channel line uh, trend line should I say and then we may just have a bit of a pullback okay but when I look at all the major internals that I look at to get an idea where the market's going to go, our opening range is bullish, okay? But we've got the 200-day simple moving average uh, to take into account. That's not far away. Uh, if we look at it on the SPX right now, that's at 4328 approximately. So, you know, uh, not too far away from where we are. If we have a look here at the NASDAQ, that's sold off a lot. So we're a bit further away from the 200 there. We look at the economically sensitive Russell that's just closed above it so are we going to hold this 200 day moving average or break through it with some of these indexes there's the industrials Dow Jones industrial average uh, are we going to break through this or is this going to be a level of resistance time will tell certainly this week will tell and then we look at the last major index we look at which is uh, the transports we're right up against that 200 day moving average as well so SPX are we going to is that downward sloping channel line going to act as a resistance level that's the first thing to uh, watch this week watch the 200 day moving average on the daily chart with all of the key moving averages or the, sorry of the key indexes um, to see whether we break that or whether we fail at those levels because I can certainly see the opening range is bullish but when I look at the SPX put call ratio that's neutral combined put call ratio that's giving me a neutral reading the skew perceived risk of a crash that's neutral the trend at 0.55 that's neutral as well but we have seen a big rebound as we know the amount of stocks above their 50-day moving average last month there's only 37 percent of stocks that were above their 50-day moving average now it's almost 82 so we've certainly seen a big rebound but a pullback in the short term after with an oversold condition could certainly be on the cards we'll keep a close eye on that and keep a close eye on the 200-day moving averages so they're the things that I'm focusing on for this week now uh, we've got a lot of positions on that will expire on the 19th so uh, next week uh, we'll be talking about a lot more positions that are expiring soon uh, a new position that I'm considering right now is marathon digital if we have a look here at Bitcoin a lot going on with Bitcoin I'm um, very much looking forward to talking about this tomorrow night actually with all of my new members for my trading edge program a sort of a higher level program uh, certainly there's a lot of very bullish developments that have occurred within Bitcoin uh, right now trading over 24,600 certainly in this upward channel line if it got above 25 that could certainly be a bullish development uh, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes right now with Bitcoin right no doubt about it BlackRock um, they've got um, BlackRock and Coinbase combining with a private uh, Bitcoin trust direct spot Bitcoin trust that's a big deal uh, there's a whole range of things but I'm gonna be talking about 
to my members uh, very soon but we are moving up in Bitcoin so as a result you're obviously seeing Bitcoin mining stocks that are moving up as well uh, Marathon Digital has had a nice move from around five dollars um, to 18 in a relatively short period of time right um, just over a month so it's seen a pretty dramatic move up and it you know I mean remember this stock at one point was trading up here around 83 uh, almost 83.50 okay so uh, we could start to see a big rebound in these type of Bitcoin mining stocks if Bitcoin does get above that 25,000 and start showing some strength time will tell but for me right now I think Marathon Digital does represent an opportunity with a defensive type covered call strategy so I've done my calculation here the real value of Marathon Digital is 2713 so right now we're trading at 1824 so it's undervalued significantly undervalued so there's two ways you could take advantage of this one way is set up a covered call with an out of the money call so you when you sell the 20 strike call you're agreeing to sell your stock at 20 if the stock finishes above 20 come the 16th of September you will do exactly as you have promised sell the stock at 20 but for that promise you you are receiving $201 for every 100 shares that you own or $201 per share right so um, a, a per contract right one contract controls 100 shares so uh, this is something that will reduce your break even obviously if you're buying it for 1824 you're receiving two dollars and one per share or 201 per contract so in other words you'd have to have a hundred shares and sell one call option contract against those hundred shares so it's cut called a covered call because the call that you're selling in this case the 20 strike is covered by the hundred shares that you own okay so we're agreeing to sell it at a higher price than what we paid for it now our downside protection is down at 1623 in other words the stock has to fall from 1824 to below 1623 for us to be losing any money 11 percent downside protection now two things can happen can finish above 20 come the 16th of September or below the only two things that can happen if it finishes above 20 we will make a 21.3 percent return in 33 days to 201 for the uh, call option we sold and at 176 per 100 shares for the capital gain selling it for more than what we paid for it right if it finishes below 20 we'll still keep the income for selling the call and we'll sell another lot of call options in October so 11% downside protection if it does go above 20 21.3% return pretty awesome now a more defensive way of doing it is to sell the in the money not the out of the money the in the money call option against the shares we own so agreeing to sell it for 15 Sean why on earth would I sell it for less than what I paid for it well the reason you're doing that is you're being very defensive you're not sure you think the stock might be overbought right now you think it could have a pullback Bitcoin ad could have a pullback and you want to be very defensive okay so we could agree to sell it for $3.24 less than what we paid for it but bring in $4.43 day one so we're still ahead we lose $3.24 but we make $4.43 so we're still ahead why would you do that well rather than like we just saw rather than 11% downside protection by selling the 20 call we've now got 24% downside protection which simply means that it's got to fall below 1381 right now it's 1824 in the next 33 days um, for us to be losing any money on paper right obviously we wouldn't be closing the the stock out at that point we just sell more call options against it but on paper if it falls more than 24 percent in 33 days we'll be losing money so what does that mean it means we've got a lot more downside protection 11 percent with the 20 call 24 percent downside protection with the 15 so if it does finish above 15 which it well and truly is now from the 16th of the 9th then we'll make six and a half percent return it's pretty good now if it finishes below 15 we keep the whole 443 that would be nice right so this is very defensive okay not as big a potential upside return only six and a half compared to 21 but the downside protection is significantly higher 24 instead of 11. so there's no perfect way of doing it it just depends on your view of what the stock's likely to do in the next month and how risk averse you are that type of thing right what suits your trading personality your trading style uh, there's no wrong or right way of doing it uh, both of them offer very good returns one of them very conservative and one of them is a little more aggressive okay so that's a position that we're looking to get into now and uh, our riot position 
where we did the same thing. We were very defensive. We sold the five strike. Um, call right now it's trading around 10 um, we'll make a 14.1% return uh, next week right in th in uh, 40 days it's a pretty good return so there are definitely some ways of doing it keep an eye on the 200 day simple moving average this week on all the major indexes um, and we will also keep an eye on that downward sloping channel line on the SPX and also on the QQQ and see if it does fall back down below that we may be overbought in the short term time will tell all right my friends next week is monthly options expiration more to talk about next week i'll talk to you all again then all the best and bye for now